Hey there, nerds. Jimmy here. What's up? I'm James. And we recently revisited Ready Player One, the movie. Yes, very Now, much that so. is to say, we have both read both books by Ernest Cline. Uh, well, I've only read Armada and Ready Player One. I haven't read Ready Player Two. I apologize. I am the only one educated to say I have read both books. I've read Ready Player One, so I know the, the original text. But we were wondering, you know, what about the movie just sort of flopped? And it wasn't that it was a horrible movie. Oh, no, it was okay. Absolutely not. But it just didn't hold up to the excitement of the I book. I mean, the visuals are great, first off. They, not once do they look bad. I mean, there are a few instances where if you look at the background, things are a little funky. But it's never enough to be like, ew, this movie looks like garbage. And what's nice is because it happens in the Oasis, the VR, that we can... That's what it was going to look like. No big deal. Unlike like the Flash, it's like, why did it look like that? That's Ex silly. Exactly. And another part, uh, like the, the story itself wasn't bad, but when you compare it to the book, there are a lot of things that are switched around. The one I did not care for, the biggest switch, was when the main character, whose name I've already forgotten, and the Artemis, when they first meet... They, it's drastically changed so that they meet earlier in the film than when they did in the book. And I didn't care for that because I feel like it's like, that's half the surprise. None of these people know what he, they, they look like. And it was more weighty in the book because it's like, wow, you're pretty. Instead of, wow, you're pretty, but sooner in the story. And it's like, I didn't like that. And one of the things we talked about, the major drawbacks, which I... They had to do. There's no way they could have gotten around it. Was licensing. Oh yes. A lot of the things in Ready Player One, obviously Ernest Cline, growing up, very much. Actually, I think he's the same exact age I am. I think he's, his birthday is my birthday. He grew up with a lot of the things, late '70s, early '80s, and that includes Disney, Star Wars, Indiana Jones, and these are things that Warner Brothers made Ready Player One. They have a lot of properties, so they're going to focus on their properties. That's why we have a lot of uh, Back to the Future. Yes. Um, we have a lot of the horror stuff. I love when Chucky comes in. That's hilarious. But we just weren't going to get a lot of the other properties that weren't Warner Brothers. Unfortunately not. When you look at the original book, I distinctly remember there being a and d uh, style quest line, as well as a Joust tournament, which... Licensing is not under Warner Brothers. They don't have the opportunity to be like, yo, we're going to put this in there. So they had to drastically change the original quest to be the race through that area with King Kong at the end. And so you, the, the changes, while I'll, I'll agree that some of them are actually pretty damn good and they actually had fun with it, it just, it, it kind of cascades in that you have to take what is this incredibly philosophical book about the nature of a, not AI, but <coughs> VR. VR, thank you. And then you have to shorten it into the length of a feature film. And you have, he's an amazing filmmaker, but you have Steven Spielberg at the helm. And both of us, as much as we hate to admit this, that was maybe not the best choice for this kind of movie. And that was probably the biggest one, and bear with me, I'm a huge fan of Steven Spielberg. I think, I, I can't, I've never heard anybody say I hate Steven Spielberg. Absolutely Because even if you don't like one movie, he's made something else that was just phenomenal. I know. But the problem is, he is part of this lore. Like, growing up, 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, he created a lot of this nerddom that we are fans of. And I therefore don't think he has the appreciation of it because he's the creator. I feel like we needed a second generation filmmaker, a la a J.J. Abrams, who would then go in and take this love that we all have. Kevin Smith would have been a hilarious, awesome one, who would have taken this love and that love would have been in the pages, on the screen. We would have seen it uh, is exactly like we did with Ernest Cline reading the book. We would have had a better feel for it as opposed to you have the guy who created it now making it. And he made a, a fine movie, but you just didn't have the love because he can't. He created it, so he can't understand how beloved it is. Very much so. When you read the book, you feel the love and the nostalgia that's in this storyline. You like. I'll admit, I spend way too much time watching videos about video game history and like pop culture history, so I'm very well-versed, so to speak, in this stuff. I can feel the nostalgia and the love for these different pieces of media and history. And then you have, like, Spielberg, who, is, who created these works, and he's like, 
Ah. So he just picks what he knows people will ultimately recognize. Like, there, in the original one, there was a 70s Gundam, so the original Gundam storyline-based Gundam, that showed up and was like, I'm going to kick ass. But in new one, in the movie, they decided to pivot and switch it to one of the 80s Gundams. And it's like... It, it, now this is wishful thinking. I feel like we're far enough from the movie that I would love to have like an Amazon Prime yes. or an Apple. And I get the conundrum because those two do not make their money off of content. Yes. So they basically have bottom, bottomless pockets at the moment. I would love for them to enter the fray and be like, you know what, let's make a series out of this. And then I, they make like a 10 issue yes. series. They could license this stuff. They're really not a threat to Disney Warner Bros. Universal at this point. But... I would love to see something like that. It'll yes. never happen, but that would be well, phenomenal. It would work, though. I'd love to see the original book more faithfully created as a TV show. Yeah. And God knows Amazon could pay for the royalties yeah. and the license. And then we might actually get the sequel. Although, exactly. the book sequel was okay. They have a huge segment to Prince, and I was like, eh, whatever. But I like Prince. He's cool. They uh, had a yeah. huge segment to Mr. Hughes. I'm not a big fan of John Hughes. Anyways... Moral of the story... I'm still an 80s kid. Ready, Ready Player One was a great movie. It delved into the topics it needed to, but it just fell short of the nostalgia and the love for the what was incorporated in it just due to the fact that it was Spielberg. Again, Spielberg's a great filmmaker, but having him direct this was not the best choice. No. Let us know what you guys think in the comments below. Do you agree? Disagree? Do you just love the movie so there are no faults with it? Let us know. Also, Apple, for the love of God, do not put ads in your VR. That's not going to happen. I don't know why I said that. That was stupid.